pandemic, the vaccine rollout, etc. But how much of the uncertainty of the virus, uh, contact tracing, like what's happening with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons today, that in particular, and then also as we move into the second half, how much does that keep you up at night? It literally keeps me up at night. Um, I mean, just by way of example, um, last night, you know, with, with Ben and Joel, you know, it was the middle of the night when the initial test result came back for the person who had the contact with them. And it's, you know, to my colleagues at the league office and at the teams that they are dealing with this 24 seven, I'm at the league office based on 30 teams out there. There's constantly tests coming back and, you know, and, and what do you do with inconclusives and retests? I mean, it's an enormous operation and it, it for everyone, who's part of this network of keeping the NBA going. It's, it's just been an incredibly difficult year, but at the same time, we're buoyed by the fact, number one, we have found a way to operate in a pandemic first in the bubble, and now through this work, these work quarantine protocols. And also, you said it perfectly, we see light at the end of the tunnel. And I think as we're now at the point where half of our teams have fans in their arenas. We're seeing a vaccine that, based on what experts were telling us a year ago, just you know, in, in late March of last year, it's a miracle that we have a vaccine at this point that is as effective as it is. Some were predicting it would take years, and the, the administration seems to be doing a good job um, increasing the rollout. The acceptance of it is increasing um, across all communities. And that's going to be important, too, for us to be fully back. But all those things seem to be coming together right now. But at the same time, as you said, the, the fact that, that we have to um, quarantine Ben and Joel is just a reminder of the enormous unpredictability we're dealing with at the same time. So uh, that, that's the, the one thing I've, I've learned over the last year, just to, to take a phrase from Dr. Fauci, the, the virus is clearly in charge. Tonight, obviously, you will have an all-star game, you will have skills competition, but how pleased are you as well, um, the impact, the importance of highlighting uh, historically black colleges and universities, health equity, and uh, all the, the money that's being raised and the awareness that we'll have over the next few hours tonight and hopefully for many days, weeks, and months to come? Well, thanks even for asking that, Mark. And, and from the very beginning of the pandemic, when we were thinking about returning to play, social justice was always at one of the issues on the table and, and no different than what we managed to do down in Orlando and credit to the players and using their platform. And then when we were thinking about playing an all-star game, we said, well, can this be about something more than the game? And I think because we were gravitating toward Atlanta, obviously the home of Turner Sports, who's broadcasting it, um, and in discussions with the Players Association, we started to think about the HBCU community that's here in Atlanta. And the idea came together of let's let's use this as an opportunity to partner with them, you know, deliver resources to them through through, through direct contributions, but also the enormous focus that we're going to be able to put on the HBCUs um, throughout today and through our broadcast and our programming. And uh, you know, by the way, I should note that our three referees who are working tonight, Tom Washington, uh, Tony Brown, and Courtney Kirk. Kirkland are all graduates of HBCUs, you know, and we have in the league office, together with the teams, 120 graduates of HBCUs who, who work with us. So they're particularly proud. And tonight in the arena, we're going to have 23 different um, HBCUs represented. So it's, it's it's a great opportunity. I think of course the, the money is badly needed, but maybe just as importantly to really shine a light on all the great things that HBCUs have been doing. It's a really important part of what we're doing today. And I know the players in my discussions with them were, were hugely pleased we were able to bring to put this partnership together. That is Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA. He is going to join Mike Greenberg on Greedy on Thursday, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time at ESPN Radio PJ to mark the one-year anniversary of the day the world shut down. And what a year it has been for Adam Silver. Yeah, amazing. And it, again, the, the foresight, we talked on, you know, all through the show about the HBCUs, like almost every decision that Adams made, uh, he's right on the pulse of what's going on in this country, particularly as it relates to our players and, and the NBA. Great decision. I just hope it's not long that he and his wife Maggie, it's the two young girls that are keeping him awake, not to worry about COVID and all the things happening in the league. PJ, time to tip it off. Up next, the 70th NBA All-Star Game. This is All-Star Sunday on ESPN Radio, presented by Indeed.